good evening everyone uh, let's start uh, next video like second video i believe second video on debugging so as per my promise earlier like i have to follow different levels in debugging so uh, this is currently going on the level one and in this level first thing you should understand the theoretical background required for understanding the debugging especially in industry level code where the where the your code base is very very large it's, it's not completed programming code of 100 and 200 line of code right it is very large code base. I'm talking here about the very large code base where uh, you cannot uh, analyze code by just analyzing 100 and 200 lines. You might, sometimes you may require to explore almost a million lines of code and then uh, you have to uh, scope down your issue to particular code, right? And that's why this requires a lot many different kind of strategy. So today I will try to share my understanding and my um, thought process uh, but since I have limited time today, so I will just try to give you a uh, theoretical background today and then tomorrow onward, as, as soon as I get the time, I will start showing uh, some hands-on uh, debugging skills. And there I can tell you how the intuition comes, what area you have to look, how to identify the particular uh, possible use cases uh, to debug, then how to identify, like there are uh, different strategies used in uh, debugging and that is called depth first and breadth first. But usually the best uh, strategy will be uh, balancing out of uh, breadth first and depth first. Uh, I mean to say in, in, in real real life uh, example, uh, like um, suppose uh, you are working on uh, multiple hypotheses. I mean, you should not work on single hypothesis because um, if you are working on single hypothesis and you are going deep down, down, deep dive, dive, dive like that, in depth you are going. But at last, if you realize that this is not the right path, then actually you wasted a lot many time, right? So that's why it is uh, always uh, beneficial to think both sides, like breadth first and depth first in balanced form, like identify different hypotheses, work on one hypothesis at a time, but switch to other hypothesis because you have multiple hypotheses in your hand, right? That's, that is the good way. Okay, so uh, let's start uh, first section, uh, like, uh, let's see marker I have, it is my, yeah. So my worker is, uh, marker is working, okay? So theoretically, uh, background required here is, uh, okay, so always, always uh, make it habit to dig deeper and find more information about the issue before starting the debugging an issue, right? So what does it mean? In simple terms, it means that try to, try to understand, try to find more and more information regarding the issue, like, uh, because um, in industry, we have a bug logging system, right? So tester is logging your bug, uh, some bug, and developer or uh, like um, architect have to look around or maybe PL has to look around those set of defects and issues. And then his job is to put some notes if he understood some scenario and then pass on that to the developer. So that developer will start working on that defect. So if I can make, so as a developer, what is my responsibility after that? I have to go through the, the written bug first understand that and then analyze, I mean, try to add or try to deep dive, uh, I mean, before going to deep dive, wait, uh, try to uh, find all supplementary information which you can able to explore with the given scenarios. So you just as an example, suppose uh, in case you can identify that does this issue is a newer issue, right? Does this new, newly introduced issue? Is this a new issue like that, okay? Then uh, imagine this is a not a new issue. What should you do? Then you have to backtrace your issue. How do you backtrace? Then you go back to the earlier version and earlier version, earlier version of code, right? So to identify like which version this issue is actually introduced, right? That makes sense. But just brutally, I'm saying that, just assume that uh, this uh, be, this will be a uh, until like base uh, version of code, it this issue exists. What should you do with that? So then in that scenario, your thought process would be, um, would be, would might be like, this, this issue probably is not going to uh, impact lots in use case scenario. That's why it is uh, it is from base code only. Like nobody has tracked it and nobody has even shown the interest to fixing this defect, right? That is the one intuition I'm getting. Otherwise, you have to include your product manager and other stake owners and they will set some priority. Uh, they might uh, I mean, defer this defect for this current product version also. So those kind of action, which is uh, primarily more or less non-developer action will be taken on the defect. 
but here I, I my interest is not to discuss a non developer activity my interest is to discuss more and more on developer what developer will do so just imagine that this this is new issue just assume that this is new issue what should you do so the next action point is find that from where from when from when this bug starts coming right starts when right the next thing and uh, it comes end with a like say for example you found some particular version from there this defect started then your like a scope of uh, issue is narrowed down right you can compare the two version you can understand what change they have done and what change happen into the code which introduced this issue now just imagine that uh, it introduced in some particular version of code then what then let's let's assume fairly assume that there are three different use case over there one is let's assume that issue because of some side effect of code they have not fixed any specific area they have developed i mean implemented some particular different area but somehow that area impacted by this issue like impact of that implementation uh, is actually created this this defect so that would be considered as a side effect of some, some feature or some code right so in that case what is my uh, way of fixing so in that case definitely uh, if it is a side effect then uh, that side effect is actually um, again giving one intuition to you as an architect or as a senior engineer that there might be coupling in the component or code area right M might be a uh, code is not segregated well or maybe if you remember there are design sense for like single responsive principle so your code might be not properly uh, designed to follow the single responsive principle or independent sense right so that kind of issues in your code but for now how to fix it simply you just look around see the things why it happens and then uh, try to decouple two things or in some way or maybe put something in precautionary after fixing this defect only you should also make sure that in future either you we will get alert earlier or maybe um, this won't get any impacted of these kind of uh, as a side effect right so that you should make sure right another kind of area maybe um issue because of um, lack of domain experience right sometime it happens like developer is not knowing actually the domain so for example uh, being an engineer you are introduced in some domain and in particular domain let's say for example uh, you introduced in cloud and you don't have any experience in of cloud then it is possible usually it is possible that a uh, very naive level issue also you left in in your development because you don't aware of that domain requirement right so these kind of fixes will be quickly done by uh, just contacting the domain expert people tell them this complete scenario probably he will quickly give you uh, some tips or some direction to uh, fix this defect so that is the another area right then third area is programmatical or logical error so that area in any way it is your responsibility as a developer to fix it and yeah so that is what this channel is or uh, this this flow is all about so if you know that this is newly introduced please try to dig dive more and then try to understand that is this a side effect or is it a domain lack of domain experience issue or it is a programmatical or logical error and accordingly you should try to fix it right let's move to the next phase okay so so the now next area is as i another case i already discussed that if you reach to the base version like you uh, suppose that uh, this code is actually a this issue is actually coming from the base version only in that case this kind of issue might be introduced as a spec understanding misunderstanding or maybe maybe it is not much important right so that is what earlier also i told you just now only told you that in that case maybe that defect is considered low priority defect and we can defer also right so that okay now you understood until this point you understood the problem and you collected the as much as uh, information about the defect you can collect right now the next thing is which is very important step is once you understand the complete scenario complete information about the defect you should try to find the way to reproduce i mean to say reproduction step and verification step because whatever fixes you are going to imply it is your responsibility to verify it if you cannot able to verify it then you are not, you cannot be sure also that your defect is fixed or not right that's why once you understand the complete defect scenario defect is information you, you gathered the complete information about the defect the next very fundamental step is to deduce the step of reproduction for reproduction and verification step so the second important step is this reproduction step and verification step now you are done with collection of defect information and you also gather the reproduction step and verification step okay you can you have you might have written some uh, test cases unit test cases for verify your implementation right third step is 
debugging step. Now you are done with this. You are done with second step. Now third step is debug the code. Like what is the issue and how we will fix it, right? So for debugging point of view, there are uh, two different approach probably people are taking care, I mean following. One is depth first kind of approach, like you finding the small uh, possibility of your issue. And then you are deep diving, deep diving, deep diving like that and trying to reach at the wall point area, right, where it is actually existing. But going in that direction only, one unique direction only, sometime is uh, is considered uh, like few condition possible that you hit the ball point and you fix it. But imagine if you cannot able to hit the ball point and you have gone very deep, right? So in that case, probably your output would be not that much beneficial. I mean, great looks great, right? Because after so many effort also, you don't have any clue about the result. So that's why as per the, my, like my understanding or any senior engineer can recommend you that you always balance out the approach, like pick the main multiple hypothesis first, try to get the multiple hypothesis first for issue and then deep dive into those hypothesis to, to solve the particular problem, right? That is what you should do. Now next is, um, these all fundamentally why it is happening, uh, let's imagine that uh, it relates with some developer code. Like uh, you boil down is that at the point is that your code quality is not good. So in that case, what is your improvement area? So I mean, by fixing bug is okay, but what should you do that so that such scenario or such defect will not occur in future? So for that purpose, your job is to now, I mean, educate your developer or development uh, member so that they can improve their coding skills, right? And that would be possible by different, like I, I already mentioned that, read lots of good code, then practice in writing good code, right? then write more readable code. Like uh, many people don't uh, give attention on writing proper comment, in, even in industry also. But uh, being a senior member, it is uh, definitely, definitely recommended and you should promote this culture in your company that readability of your code is super, super important. Because if you don't write the readable content, actually it is it is um, wasting your lots of developers time in, in the future. Because that developer who has actually written the code, he might left the company also, right? And then if somebody, some new one come, and that logic might be a little complex, then it is very difficult for new joining to, to understand the logic completely to, to recover or remove or refactor that code, right? So that's why uh, readability of the code is super, super important, especially for maintainability purposes, right? Try to understand debug other code, like, yeah, so usually people are, uh, you listen, I mean, uh, many folks who are experienced, they can agree with me that many times uh, we are very much handicapped uh, in understanding of others' code. We are always feeling that I'm not getting what he has written, right? So even though that code is not good, still you try to understand because understanding of others' code will add value in your coding style, your coding quality, okay? So that part you should consider, right? Then uh, in, in, in a small uh, coding uh, size, uh, it is okay to understand few con condition check and then few status of maintain, I mean monitoring the uh, few variables state, you can able to fix the defect. But when your code is very large, like industry kind of experience, when 10 million, 50 million, I mean 20 million lines of code for one component or one part of the uh, component, that will give lots of compli complexity in this I mean, code base. So for that purpose, I mean debugging tool or ID is very important, super, super important, just like GDB, Valgrind. So those are you know, the tools, uh, ID tools, debugging tools, who are, those are very important, super, super important for large code base, right? So that is the second point. Third point is, so in each scenario, uh, so in general, we how we are proceeding for um, different strategy, right? So let's try to understand strategy one. So if you have a log system where file number and line number is printed, that would be super easy to understand where you are getting this defect, right? Where is, the, where is your issue? So you can, ball point or that location if you know the file and if you know the line number of code but most of the time it is not like that so if it is not then i will try to find empty location where the same scenario execution happened right so sorry um, if you don't have um, like line number and file number then uh, your responsibility is to uh, just try to reproduce that um, scenario by own and look around like how far this uh, um, this defect is uh, carry forward in the co in code actually right so there are two things okay code and uh, scenario 
So the first strategy is if you know the file number and line number, you go to that file number and line number, review the code, then do the changes, whatever. I mean, if you understand the issues, then do the changes and then verify it. But what if this line number and file number is not indicative? Then that in that case, you have to consider the reproduction step, like try to find the reproduction step. If you are able to produce a reproduction step, then try to debug in that scenario, right? Just try to go deep dive and do the code review, right? Because in this case, code review is the only of your friends, right? The strategy two is, um, uh, what if, um, okay, so one thing is we understand the line number. Now you are not getting the line number, okay? Now in that scenario, my second strategy would be try to identify the version, like from where it started, right? If you remember earlier, I told you that it is always super, super important that uh, you have to gather more information, like by when it is started, which product version, which code version it is started, like that. So now it is the time to focus on narrow down the code and uh, get the particular area where it started, from where it is it is started, right? So yeah, so that's it. The strategy three is. Um, so let's let's imagine that strategy one and strategy two both not work well for your defect finding. So in that case, you have to look around other tools report, maybe crash, maybe uh, memory leaks maybe lots of warning, anything, like anything, these kind of additional report you have, you should try to observe those reports now. If it is a crash point, so probably if you debug it, it will go to some crash point and stop. So it will give you the line number and file number, file name, right? Hmm. So, and another super important step is this step, right? This is also a good, that you should start, uh, at least you should understand that how you will check these variables state value at runtime. Sometimes, even this, that is not possibility, then opening the log and, um, yeah, opening the log as much as possible is a good idea because that will give you some indication until what point your, uh, this current process is worked well and after what point it starts be <laughs> behaving the issue. So that's